Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Bava Metzia Dafsam. Gimel today's stuff is sponsored by the Hadron Women of Long Island in loving memory of Joan Berman, Allah Shalom, beloved mother of our friend and co-learner Marcy Berman Farrell. Marcy's passion for truth and equity Marcy's passion for truth and equity has deep roots, and we daven that our learning will serve as a merit for the entire family. We're going to get started now with a quick review of the end of yesterday's stuff, which was quite complicated, and I want to kind of put it in a in a box for you so we kind of have that as a basis before we move on. We have this case in the Mishnah where we're trying to learn about Rebid. I want to just preface this by saying that Rebid is interest. Interest we always think about is associated with a loan. But what we're going to learn is that there's a lot of cases where there could be a sale, where there could be an issue of interest, okay? And, th and then we're going to have to always distinguish, and this is something we're going to see throughout, which is sometimes the rat, now only by rabbinic law, okay? You can't have a sale that would be interest by Torah law, because that's, by Torah law, it's just a loan. But the rabbis extended it, not only to loans where there's not exactly rebid, well, which we're going to see, also to cases where there's a sale that somewhat looks like interest. So that's what it seems like they're talking about in our Mishnah, because the Mishnah gives this case where the case is not alone. The case is, <laughs> you bought wheat from someone, right? For, okay, I buy wheat from you for a dinar zaha, for 25 dinarim, for a core. Okay, that's the going rate. But you don't give me, the <laughs> that's the rate. You don't give me the wheat yet. And then when I go to get my wheat later on, you say, oh, you know what? I Sorry, I go to get my money. And then you say, oh, I'll give you wheat. I have wheat, but I'll give it to you. Sorry, I said it wrong. I say I want my wheat so I could go buy wine. And you say, oh, you know what? I have wine. I'll give you wine. And then you say, well, I'm not going to give you the wine right now. I'll give you the wine later, but I'll lock into the price right now. So that all seems like a case of a sale. But since, again, what is rebeat? And what's the concept here that we're going to take to in the rabbinic law? That when somebody gets the money, okay, I bought from you, you get the money, you get to keep it before giving me the items. And then later I get that more because if the price goes up, I locked into that low price, I'm going to actually get something of a higher value. That's that's a benefit. So that would be repeat. <laughs> that's the simple reading of the mission. The problem is that there's some things that don't really make sense. Um, the real problem is that the Mishnah says that once there's a sha'ar, which we assume, right, once there's a rate, you can actually do this. I'm allowed to buy something from you, give you the money, and only get it back later at a higher price potentially. So how could the Mishnah be saying that this is a problem when it's really okay? okay? So that's our big question. So the first answer we had was Rabbah, who said, basically, this isn't a sale case. A sale case is in the later Mishnah. I can give you money in advance to get it back. Here, it was a loan, okay? Rabbi basically says, it's a case where you owe me money. And then you basically said, when I went to get the money, you said, I said, I want my money back because I want to buy weed. And you said, oh, you know what? I have weed, but I'll give it to you over the course of time. So it was a loan that turned into this issue of the chitim and all that. And then we said, what's the issue? Well, the issue is, it's not the same as a sale. A sale, you can do this. A loan, you can't. That's what Rabbah said, basically. The problem with Rabbah was the following. The Mishnah basically says, the way this works, this doesn't work, this is Rebi, because that was what the Mishnah was defining, is a case where as if you don't have the wheat or you don't have the wine, but if you have it in hand, then we're allowed to do this. Now, according to Rabbah, if it was a loan, you can't do this at all, whether you have the wheat, don't have the wheat. And that was the problem with Rabbah, and that's why we rejected. Abai gave a different case, which I'm not going to spend too much time on, because in the end, we're not going to go back to Abai at all. We will go back to Rabbah. Abai basically said there must be some details they're not giving us, and it's a Haramat Ribi case, and it's like a case where we brought Haramat Ribi, which is, again, where what happens? I want to borrow right? And then you say, I don't have money, but I'll give you chitim. You give me chitim. Sorry, opposite. You want to borrow. I say, I don't have chitim, but I'll, do, right? Uh, let me just think who's who here. Okay. Hopefully I'm doing it right. Um, you're going to borrow from me a money. I say, I don't have, I have chitim. 
Right. And then I give you the chitim, but then I buy back the chitim at a discounted rate. And then you, so you got the money for it. Yeah. I got a discounted price. And then eventually you have to pay me back the chitim anyway and the value of them. So I end up getting my full money back and you give me a discount. Now, those are two separate transactions. Theoretically, it should be fine. But the problem is that I also gave you a loan and I also benefited because I ended up buying back my items I gave you for a cheaper price. So I benefited. So because of that, it looks like we beat. It's not exactly we beat, but it looks like it. And that's what they claim this case is like. That. The problem is that that would mean that first they bought it for 30. I, I loaned the money for 30 and then bought it back for 25. And the case in the mission clearly is not that because the mission says the Sha'ar was 25 and then it went up to 30. So there's no way to really explain it the way Abaye does. And therefore we reject that interpretation. Now we're going to go to Rava. So we have Rava with a hey, we had Abaye. And now we're going to go to Rava. Rava is going to go back to the case that Rava, that Rava said and explain it though, according to Rabbi Yoshai. Now the main problem we have with Rava, I want to remind you, is that according to Rava, in a sale, you can basically lock into a price and get the money, get the produce over time, even if it went up in value, because it's a sale. In a loan, you can't. But what's the problem? We said in a, in a loan, right, according to Rabba, you can't at all. And our Mishnah said you can't because you don't have the produce. But if you had the produce, you could commit to returning the loan with produce locked in at this price. So that even if the produce goes up, I'll actually, right, I can get more if you have produce in hand. Now, that's not true according to what Rabbi was saying. In a loan, you can't do it at all. So now we're going to learn that Rabbi Yoshaya actually held that in a loan, you can do this also as long as you have the produce in hand. That's what we're going to be right now. So comes Rabbi, starting from the very bottom of Samach Bet Amubet. Ela Amar Rabbi, Kisha Chibna, when I die, here is just an intro line. Rabbi Yoshaya Nafak Levati. I'm going to get greeted into heaven with Rabbi Yoshaya. He's going to come walking to me and say, oh, Rava, I'm so proud of you. Why? Because I explain Mishnayot like him. Okay, what Rava is saying is, and Rashi even points out, I do this often, that when I get to a Mishnah that I can't understand, like this one, this is a good classic example, doesn't make any sense. I have a way to explain it. I find the bright toad that Rabbi Yoshaya had. He had his own version of bright toad. I find his version of bright toad, and then I explain the Mishnah according to his unique version of bright toad. So therefore, Rabbi Yoshaya is going to be so happy when I get to heaven, he's going to come greet me. Here's the bright of Rabbi Yoshaya. The Tani Rabbi Yoshaya. Now, this is going to sound very similar to the way Rabbi described the case in the Mishnah. You owe me 100 dinarim. So it starts off with a loan. We have a loan. It's not a sale. And they're going to have to say, then why did the mission start off with Okay? He said, uh, Okay? It starts with you buy. So we're going to have to explain what that means. But basically, we're going to say the following. And then, again, now we're talking Rabbi Yoshaya. We're not talking the Mishnah. But basically, we're going to say the Mishnah is talking about the exact same concept as in this bright of Rabbi Yoshaya. You, I lend you $100, and now I go to get my money back, or 100 dinarim. I go to your threshing floor, where you are, and I say, say, hey, I want my money back. Why? Well, you're on the threshing floor. It's the end of the wheat season. You know, now the wheat's ready. It's the, the beginning of the selling season of the wheat. I need the money now to go buy wheat. Amarlo, you say to me, chitim yeshli, shani noten lecha. Oh, you want wheat? You're going, you want the money back because you want to get wheat. Oh, great. I'll give you the wheat for the same price. Okay, so I'll give you 100 dinarims worth of wheat. But I'm not going to give it to you today. I'll give it to you over time. Save asa'an alai kashar shalakshat. And now we're going to, right? I basically say, well, commit to me that you're going to give me the price and the shuk now. And you do. So now what happens? We had a loan, started off as a loan. And now you owe me wheat based on the price of the loan, which again, I might get a higher value of the wheat. He gives man chitim linkor. Now what happened? Now is the time to sell the wheat. And I want the wheat now so I could sell it to buy wine. Now they're selling wheat in the shuk. I want my wheat so I can go buy wine with it. 
ואמר לו, יש לי יין שאני נותן לך. Oh, wine? You want wine? I've got wine. I'll give you wine instead. You don't have to go bothering to go buy it somewhere else. I'll give you wine, the value of the wheat. Now, uh, the wheat. Now, let's assume the wheat was 25. Now the wheat went up to 30 dinari. So I'll give you 30 dinarims worth of wine locked into the price right now. Right? Now you commit to me wine at the rate of 30. Now the wine presumably could go up in price and it's time to sell wine and I want my wine now. And the wine went up to 35. So I gave you 25 to begin with. Now already my value is up at 35. See where this is going, right? I want my wine so I could go buy wine. Because now I want to sell wine so I can get oil. And you pull out of a hat, right? Oh, I've got oil. You want oil? Sure. I'll promise you oil for the price that it is now. Now, now, you don't need all these stages to happen. At any stage, can you do this? Can you basically commit to me that you're going to lock into this price and end up possibly giving me more later on? Isn't that rebeat? Well, comes Rabbi Yashai. Now, according to Rabbi, this is re the way we explained Rabbi, right? And we had, according to Rabbi before, and the way we were explaining it, we said, according to the sources we saw this Brighta that we saw yesterday, it's a problem whether Yeshlo Enlo, you can't do this which then was the whole problem with the Mishnah, because the Mishnah said, you can't do this if you don't have the grains when you said so, if you don't have the wine when you said so, if you don't have the Shemin when you said so. But presumably, if you had it, you could do it. And that's what Rabbi Yoshaya says in his Brayta. Kulamim yesh lo mutar, en lo asul. This all works if you have. If you don't have, it doesn't work. But if you actually have the grains, you have the wine, you have the oil when you commit to me, it's as if you're committing to give me that, those grains, that wine, that oil, even if in the end you don't, because right in the end, you don't even give me the grains, you give me wine for the grains. And even if, right, it doesn't make a difference. As long as you have it, that allows you to do this. And that's the difference between Rabbi Shai and the bright we saw yesterday. The bright we saw yesterday doesn't allow this in any way. This is Rebid. In the end, you're going to get 35, you know, again, assuming everyone goes up five, I'm just giving random amounts, right? So the wheat went up five, so then it was worth 30. The wine went up five. It was now worth 35. The, the oil went up another five. Now it's worth 40. You could get 40 dinarim for your 25 dinarim loan. And it's not repeat. As long as every time you committed to me that you'll give me the grains, you'll give me the wine, you'll give me the oil you had in your house. Because then it's, it's as if, it's not really, but it's as if you committed to give me that right then and there. Okay? Even if you don't. And not only that, but we're going to see it in a minute, then not only that, but you could actually, once you commit to the oil, and let's say the oil goes up to 40, when I go to get that oil, let's say that's the end game, because obviously this could go on forever. But if that's the end game, you could even give me the money value. You can even give me 40 dinarim in money, which is crazy. I give you 25 dinarim, I get back 40, and we don't view that as interest, even though it was a loan. That's the big chedesh of Rabbi Yosha. So now they say, well, we have one problem here. My lakach. What is lakach then? The Mishnah said you buy. There was no sale here. Nobody bought anything. To which they say, lakach behalvaato. Well, what you, what I bought in my loan, I bought on account of my loan rights to your wheat. And then I bought rights to your wine. And then I bought rights to your oil, but it was all from a loan. It wasn't, a, they don't view lakach, which is usually meant as a sale, not as a real sale. It's just that I'm gaining something for my loan. And again, it's a weak explanation, but it's the best explanation we have of this mission because there's really no other way to explain. Again, I want to explain what the problem is. If we, just so to remind you, because I know this is very complicated. If we say it was a sale and it was all a sale and not a loan, we already learned that that's permitted. You're allowed to do that even if you don't have the wheat. I can pay in advance and we can lock into a price. You can have no grains in your house at all. You can lock into that price and you can later give me a higher value of grains. Later, we're going to get to two possible explanations as to why that is and why we don't view that as interest because theoretically it's like interest. Again, it's not a loan, but it's like interest. So we're going to have to talk about that. But that would be if it was a sale. That's why we have to explain this case because if it was a sale, the details of the mission of ain lower yesh lo, that distinction doesn't exist. So therefore, we have to put it in the category of a loan, 
And it only works according to Rabbi Yoshaya because the bright we saw yesterday that was authored by somebody else doesn't work. Because there, again, according to what we saw yesterday, if it's a loan, it doesn't work at all, whether ain't lo, yesh lo. And if it's a sale, it works no matter what, whether yesh lo, ain't lo. So the Mishnah in distinguishing between yesh lo and ain't lo, we've got to find why that is. And we find Rabbi Yoshaya, who disagrees with the bride to yesterday and has his own version that there is a distinction in the loan. Even in the loan, it can be done if you have the produce on hand. So I'm a rabbi. Shmami nami de Rabbi Yoshaya tzlat. The Mishnah loves to say this. The Gemara loves to say this kind of thing. Ah, we can derive three things from here. Okay, we're going to see. They love the number three and they like deriving things. So it's a perfect statement. They say the following. And this is a good review of what we just said. Shmami na de mami din milva al gabe pero. You can turn a loan into produce. In other words, instead of giving the loan, you can promise produce and give it over time, locking into a particular price. Below Amrina, and we don't say like we said yesterday, here's a bit of a double negative, so try to be follow it. We don't say like we said yesterday, which was, Diloki suroha bali adohu. This is not like you're paying money for something and gaining produce. It's not like a sale. Remember yesterday, we said it's not like a sale and therefore it can't be done. Rabbi Yoshai says, we don't say that. We actually do allow it. Under what condition? That's the second Shmamina. Ushmamina hudi yeshlo. Only though if you have the produce. Okay? So we don't, it was, it's a little tricky because we actually do distinguish between a sale and a loan. But we don't say, oh, well, this can't be done at all because it wasn't a sale and only in a sale it can be done because this can be done. It's just that we have to give that the condition that you actually have the produce in hand. And the third thing we're going to learn is Shmami Na Itale de Rabbi Yana. De Amar Rabbi Yana, and this I mentioned before, even though it didn't say it explicitly, but Rabbi Yana said, Mali Hen, Mali Demehen. What's the difference if you can give me the oil at the price of 40, as per the example I gave, or you give Demehen the money of 40? In other words, Rabbi Yana says, if this can be done, then, and it can be done with produce, then it can also be done with money. That's, once you can give me 40 dinarims worth of produce, it doesn't make a difference whether you give me 40 dinarims worth of the shaman, the oil, or you give me 40 dinarim in cash, okay? It doesn't make a difference because mali hey, mali demand. It's all one and the same. Whether you return it in oil or you return it in money, you're basically giving me more. Now, this is a, is a, is a point, he has a point of contention between Rabbi and Rabbi Yana. Not everybody agrees with this. So the each one, Rav Amal, now, Rabbi, I just want to point out, Rabbi Yashai never said anything about money, but the point is, if he thinks that you could do this, it seems like you could do it with money also. The assumption is, he just thinks there's no really big problem again. All the while, assuming that you have potentially grains, oil, or wine in your house, then you can commit to lock into this price, return at the higher price, whether you return produce or whether you return money, it doesn't make a difference. Now, the eat bar. Ravos Amar. Now here, Rav, now I just want to, it's a little confusing because we keep going back and forth between sales and loans. Now we were talking about a loan. This machlo between Rav and Rabbi Yanai are, is actually about a sale. And this whole poskim ala perot. Rav Amar osim amana beperot ve'en osim amana bedami. Rav is going to disagree with Rabbi Yana. He says, I can give you money up front for a sale. I can buy grains from you. You can commit to give me grains over the course of the year. Even, right, let's say in a year from now, even if the price of grains go up, I pay you 25 dinarim. The grains now worth 30, you can provide me back with 30 dinarim's worth of grain. But what you can't do, according to Rav, is give me money. Because that looks like a loan. I gave you 25, you gave me 30 back. So he says you can't do that. Rabbi Yana, Amar, Mali Hain, Mali Demand. And this is where Rabbi Yana said it, that we then said, oh, Rabbi Yashai must agree with him. He says it in a sale, but we assume he would say the same thing here, which is once you can give the value of an item, of course, you know, the produce, you can, of course, give the, the money. What's the difference? It's all one and the same. Now we're going to bring a difficulty on Rav. Well, if Rav says you can't give money, well, then how does he explain this bright of Rabbi Yashayim? Says in the bright of Rabbi Yashayim, with all these things, the grains, the oil, the, the wine, if you have them, you can do it. And then presumably you can even give money. So how is Rob going to explain this? So the first answer, we're going to have two different answers, although the first one we're going to have to modify a little. I'm Rav Huna, I'm Rav, Bishem Ashach. Rav, Rav Huna says in the name of Rav that Rav must have said here what happened 
There was some added detail here. The only reason why this works that you can then return it is because you must have done, I must have done Mashiach when, when I said I want my grains and you said, oh yeah, grains, I got grains. I'll give you grains, but you know what? I'll give them to you over time. And then later when I came to get the grains, you said, I'll give you wine. And then you said, I'll give you oil. Each time I pulled, I did an act of acquiring on the object. Now, how does that help? It's obvious how it helps because if I did an act of acquiring and then give it back to you, okay, you said, I'll give it to you in, in a year. So I say, fine, I pull it toward me or, you know, or whatever it was, a month, two months, doesn't matter. If I did an act of acquiring, that means that even though I'm leaving it in your possession right now, it's really mine. Now, if it's mine, this is an interest. When I get it back at a higher rate, well, if I have grains in my house and they go up in value, they go up in value. What's the difference? That's not interest. Interest is I leave it in your domain. Now, here I left it in your domain, right? If I, mashach, if I, if I acquired it, I technically left it in your domain, but it's actually mine. So if it's mine, well, then there's no interest because it went up in value as my property. It's just like we learned DNA Shomrim. It's like you're watching over my item. So what if it goes up in value? So then the Gemara says, wait a minute. Okay, you don't even need to mention this if it was Mashiach. Obviously, it's mine. Obviously, there's no interest. That can't possibly be what we're talking about here because that would be a totally obvious halacha unnecessary to say. So, so now we modify Rav's answer. What Rav must be saying is, even though normally you can't give back the value in money, in this case you can, why? Because not only did Yeshlo, not only do you have the grains, but you actually put them in a corner for me. And you said, these are for Michelle and you left them there. Now, I didn't do Mashiach, so it's not mine. But since you put it in the corner, it's enough to say this is mine and now, when you go to return it and it's now worth 30, let's say you returned it right away and you actually return those grains, you could actually give me money because you're just taking what's what you already designated as money. Now, again, when you, when you switch it to wine, so you're going to move the, the grains out of that corner and replace it with wine. But there's always going to be something in the corner that's designated for me. I didn't acquire it, so it's not as obvious, but still, that's what Rav is saying. Then it will work. But without that, it's not going to work. That's answer number one. Now, when you have a Tanaitic source that disagrees with an Amora, another way of resolving it is to simply say, oh, the bright of Rabbi Yashai holds by a particular opinion that I don't hold by. And that's Shmuel's answer. Shmuel Amar Hamane, Rabbi Yehudahi. That bright of Rabbi Yashai, which contradicts Rav, because it basically seems to imply you could give back the value and Rav doesn't think you can. That's Rabbi Yehuda. What's Rabbi Yehuda's position? No, it's not clear what Rabbi Yehuda's position is, but Abaye thinks that Rabbi Yehuda's position is the following. In a minute, we're going to see the Braita, where Rabbi Yehuda disagrees with the rabbis. We're going to have Abaye's explanation of the Machlok, and we're going to have Rabbi's explanation of the Machlok. So this is only going to fit with Abaye's explanation. Rabbi Yehuda holds that if we make an arrangement, okay, let's again go back to the basics of rebeat. Basics of rebeat are, I loan you money, and I say, I'm giving you $100, and under the condition that you return me 105. That's rebeat. That's interest. That's what we call rebeat ktsutsa. I'm going to keep going over this so that by the end, you'll have this in your sleep. That's rebeat ktsutsa. That means we agreed from the beginning. What, what about our case? Our case is not rebeat ktsutsa. I never said there was definitely going to be rebeat. What happened? I loaned you money and you said you're going to give me in wheat and we committed to the price of wheat right now. The price could go up. The price could go down. The price could stay the same. That's what's called sadaqa biribi. We don't know if there will be rebeat or not. There might be, but there might not be. So from the beginning, it's not like we made an arrangement. Well, there will definitely be interest. It's a possibility. Sadaqa means, right, one way it could go is rebeat. It could also end up not being rebeat. So he says, when there's a case of that, it's actually permitted. If it's not definitive that there will be interest, then it's not rebeat. How do we know this? Well, like I said, we're going to have Two different explanations of what the machloka between Rabbi Yehud and the rabbis is. And this is only going to be one of them. You owe me a hundred. I lent you a hundred dollars. You owe me a hundred. Well, you gave me your land as collateral. So I now have possession of your land. If you eat the produce of that land while I have it as collateral, that's all fine and good. If I, as the purchaser, because I'm kind of purchased your land as collateral, 
Ochil perot asu. I can't eat proceeds from that field. Why not? Because in the end, I'm going to get my hundred dollars back. And if I also ate produce and get my hundred dollars back, that's going to be rebeat. Rabbi Yehuda Mel, af is not shalokef ochel perot mutal. If I eat the produce, it's okay. Now, Amalev Rabbi Yehuda maaseh be baitus benzon and shasasa deumet perot pirav lezar ben Azariah. Okay, there was this wealthy guy baitus benzon. He gave a loan to someone. The person didn't pay back. Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah gave him rights to go into the field of the person. And he was a, like a purchaser who ate the produce. So here you see, I'm right, Rabbi Yehuda says. The rabbi said to him, what kind of proof is that? You got your facts wrong. Baitus ben Zoni did not eat the produce. He just had the land as collateral, but he didn't gain the produce. The owner of the land, the original owner, ate the produce, not him. So you got your facts wrong. That's not a proof. Now, the question is, what's the machloka between them? So, my benayu, amar abaye, tzadachah beribidi, ka benayu. The machloka is, this is tzadachah beribidi, says abaye. Why? Well, there's two possibilities of what could happen with this land. Either you pay me back the money, in which case I return you the land, or you don't pay me back the money, in which case I keep the land, in which case the payroll that I ate were mine. So, it's not clear this will be interest. This is only going to be interest if you actually pay me back the loan. If you don't pay me back the loan, it won't be interest. So that's what Rabbi Yehuda says. I can eat the payroll because it's not definitive rebeat. If it's not definitive, because maybe you'll forego the loan, you won't pay it. I'll get the land. I'll keep it. It'll be mine. And the payroll retroactively were mine to begin with. Rabbis say, no, since you might return the money and then it will become rebeat, it's a problem. That's Abayi's explanation. This is where you see Rabbi Yehuda holds that rebeat. This would be the way we could explain Rav would say the bright of Rabbi Yoshai is according to Rabbi Yehuda, and I don't like the rabbis, and therefore I wouldn't allow it. But Rabbi Yoshai allows it. I beg to disagree. Rav says it's a different machloket than what you thought. He just says a different explanation of the machloket of Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis. Rav Amar, we beat Amanat Lach Zil Ikabenayu. Am I allowed to take interest if I'll return it? Meaning, I don't know what's going to happen, whether you're going to pay me back the money or not. So in the meantime, I'm going to eat the payroll. I'm going to keep track of how much I gained from the pro all the produce. Then if you give me the money back, I'll give it back to you. Okay, I'll deduct it from the loan or I'll, or I'll you know, you'll give me $100. I'll give you back the $20 I ate for that year. That, according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's fine. As long as you're going to give back the money, it's no problem. The rabbi say you can't take something that can't take interest with the intent to then return it later. That doesn't work. And that's why they don't like this. So two explanations of what this machloket is. Again, the first one was used to answer our question against Rav. Now comes Rav and says, I'm going to derive something else from Rabbi Yanai. Hashadama Rabbi Yanai, moving now to Amabet, Mali Hain, Umali Dmeim Amrinan, Mali Dmeim Amrinan. So Mali Dmeim, Mali Hain, Nami Amrinan. This is a very complicated line. It's It sounds like they're flipping everything, but they're really not. I'm not going to get into too much detail here because we'll get bogged down in the, the nitty gritty, but I want to explain to you the idea. He says, if in a loan, we could say, mali hey, mali demand, what's the difference if you return the payroll? If I could give you back the oil, if you could give me back the oil, then you could also give me the value of the oil and money. Well, in a sale, now it doesn't say we're moving to a sale, but that's what they're going to say in a minute. <speaking> in <Spanish> The same thing, and the tricky part here is demehan and hang get switched what they are, but I'll just kind of say that demehan here is not the money, it's the fruits, and the hand is the money. But basically what they're going to say here is, in a sale, when I give you money in advance and you give me produce later locked into this price, we're allowed to do that based on this concept of what Rabbi Yanai said. What's the difference if it's produce? What's the difference if it's money? Now, what does he mean here? The whole issue we talked about before, yesh lo, ain lo. Remember, we had this whole thing. If it's a loan, only if you have it. In a sale, it doesn't, if, if Rabbi Yanai's whole thing is, what's the difference whether you have money or whether you have produce? It's all one and the same. Produce is valued at money and money is valued at produce. So, you know, money could be used to buy produce. So now he's doing the reverse. Before we said, if you can pay the produce, then you can pay its value. Now we're going to do the reverse. If you have the money, you can actually buy payroll with it. So if I buy, if I give you money to buy wheat and you don't give me wheat now, okay, and we lock into this price. Now, before in a loan case, what did we say? You need to have it in your possession. But says Rava that we can infer from Rabbi Yanai 
the fact that you have money right now, okay, I gave you money. So now you have money. It's as if you have produce. That's this whole point, right? Money, produce, produce, money. It's all one and the same. It's all value. So you have money. You theoretically could go buy the produce right now. So it's as if you have. That's basically what he says. By having the money, it's as if you have the produce. So now, the, and that explains what he's basically doing is he's taking Rabbi Yana, he was talking about a loan case and explaining why it works in a sale case based on that logic. Because if you can interchange between produce and money, then basically we could say, oh, if you have money, then it's as if you have produce. And that's why it doesn't matter yesh though or ain though. That's why it says, we can learn from your poskim al shabashuk, even if you don't have the, the produce in your house. So again, that means I can buy from you. I can pay in advance for wheat, even if you have no wheat, because now you have money in hand and that money could be turned into wheat. You could just go to the shuk and buy wheat. So it's as if you have. To which, they come and they say to Rebbe, what on earth are you talking about? What did Rabbi Yoshaya say? You want to take from Rabbi Yoshaya, which was based on Rabbi Yana, and, and say it doesn't matter, yesh lo, ain't lo. But what did Rabbi Yoshaya say? Kulami mi yesh lo mutarim ain't lo asul. Rabbi Rabbi Yoshaya said, you have to have it in your possession. Now, in that case, what happened? I gave you money. You had the money. But you don't have the wine or the oil or the wheat. You can't do it. So why not? So here we get back to what I keep talking about over and over, or the Gemara keeps talking about. Amar lehu hatam halva'a No, that's exactly the distinction. In a loan, you're actually going to have to have it in hand. In a sale, which is what... Rabbi Rava was talking about right now, if I buy, give you money up front and only get the produce later, then it doesn't matter if you have it in hand or not, because in a sale, we're going to be more lenient. Because again, when we're going to say something looks like rebeat, even if it's not exactly, and we're going to be strict about it, we're going to say that more likely, we're going to say that in a loan case, not less likely in a sale case. So basically, we can lock into that early price according to Rava based on Rabbi Yana, because since I can say, if I could pay you the produce, I can then give you the money value of it, and that doesn't look like we beat them, we can say here also, if you have the money, it's as if you have the produce. That's basically the idea. So now they say, um, um, Rabbi of Rabbi Yosef give a different explanation for Ein Poskin la Pero. Most people think, again, there's a bit of a, part of what makes this whole, well, at least to go complicated, is not just the concepts are complicated, but even what the Gemara is talking about is complicated and there's a lot of different interpretations. But many people think the Rebbe and Rabbi Yosef are giving an alternative explanation here as to why it's not rebeat and why you don't need to have the wheat in order for me to be posek ala pelo, for me to give you money up front for a sale when I'm going to get the money later at a higher at a higher rate, um, but right, get basically more for my money, why that's allowed. So Rabbi Rav Yosef, Amr Travayu, and why it's not, again, what is it, why does it look like we beat? Because I'm giving you money and you're giving me more back, okay? So now he's going to say the following, and you, what, what defines we beat? That you're, the fact that you had the money you benefited, and then, right, because of that, you're paying me for that benefit. So what we said in the previous is, right, it's as if you have the produce already, it's as if you're giving it to me. But Rabbi Rav Yosef says there's a different reason. My time, Adamrina Rabban and Puskim Alashar Shapashuk Alpha Pisha Enlo. What's the reason? Da Amarle, because in the end, what's the problem? I'm getting more for my money. I give you 25, I'm getting 30. So the benefit's on me. Right? Remember, Rava was focusing more on you and whether Yesh Lo Enlo. He's going to focus on the Rabba and Rabbi Yosef are going to focus on me. I'm not really benefiting at all from this sale. Even though down the road I'll get 30, there's really no benefit to me. And that's what we're going to see right now. I can say to you, okay, I got 30s worth of grains now, but take your favor you did to me and throw it to the thorns. That was really no favor. I didn't really gain. Why? My honey, what did you do for me? If I had kept the money, the whole thing is, right, you gave me more for my money. But I could have gone right then and there and bought in Hini and Shili wheat for a lower price. Or I could have bought wheat for the price of 25 and they would have gone up in my property to 30. In other words, I didn't gain from the fact that you later gave me 30. Had I bought it at the time, had I taken my money and actually gotten something for it, I could have gotten a cheaper price somewhere else. I could have maybe 
you know, had the wheat and just kept it in my, and it would have gone up in my thing. So you didn't really benefit me. And that's why you could be posek ala peiro. So these are two different reasons why poskin ala peiro works, and it's not in, it's not rebid. But now we're going to have two questions on Rabbi and Rav Yosef. The first is asked from Abai directly to Rav Yosef. There's something that we know is forbidden, and that's to loan se'abasea. It is forbidden for me to loan you a, a, a pound of wheat and get back a pound of wheat because it's possible the pound of wheat will go up in price and that will be rebeat. Now, that's no different than me giving you money and getting wheat later on for a higher price. Based on what Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef said, you should be able to loan Se'a B'Se'a because I could say, if I had not loaned you this Se'a, I would have kept it. And this is what it says in the Gemara here. Again, take your good, you didn't do me any favors by returning me the grains at a higher rate because I could say to you, what, were my grains going to burn in my, in my granary? No, I would have kept my grains. They would have been protected. They would have gone up in value on their own. So the fact that you're giving me more now is only because the the wheat the grains went up in value. The wheat went up in value. You didn't benefit me at all. And say, obviously, I should be permitted based on what you're saying. Again, we're going to go back to our answer, our obvious answer, which is, hatam Again, we're going to distinguish loan and sale. In a sale, we'll permit this. In a loan, we won't permit it. Okay? So even though it's a good claim, still in a loan, we're going to be strict because that's the general idea. And second question. Okay, this wasn't a direct question at Rabbi, Rabbi Rabbi Yosef. It was just he asked Rabbi about Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef. What do you mean it's no benefit to me? I linked into this price right now and I have a sale. If I don't do this sale, and that is an interesting assumption, I'd have to go find a middleman to go buy me and I'd have to pay the middleman to get me. So I am benefiting for locking into this deal because it's a deal that's right here and I don't have to go paying anyone else to make a deal for me. So two possible answers. Amrle de Kayad Nami could be this deal also included the a middleman. We just didn't hear about it, but maybe there was already. Rab Ashi Amar Zuzi de Inashe Inu Abdele Safsigute. Rab Ashi says that maybe Rab Ashi was living, he was living in a different generation, and maybe things had changed. But he basically said, What do you mean? Your money is, is your middleman. You don't need a middleman to go buy. The fact that you have money gets you buying power. You don't need to always go to a middleman, but it could be it was different in the in Rab Ada. Um, Rabbi Adi Bar Abba, Bar Abba's time. And maybe they used middlemen and Rabashi didn't. So Rabashi was saying, what are you talking about? You don't need a middleman. Okay, so that was the side point. Now we're going to go to another thing that Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef say. And now we're getting a little bit off topic. Rabbi Rabbi Yosef Damar Travai. Hi, Mandi Yaev Zuzay Atara Kharifa. We're on the same topic, which is if you're going to lock into this early price, <coughs> I go to you, I say, I want to buy grains for the season. I want you to provide it to me. You know, you say, I'll, fine, I'll take your money now. I'll provide it to you over time, which we already just went through over and over today why this is permitted and that it is permitted. I have to show up at your granary. I have to go show up. Uh, sorry, not your granary, your threshing floor. I have to show up on your threshing floor and make the deal with you there. Okay, so the Gemara says, why? For what reason? If you have to do a Kenyan, halokani. there is no Kenyan here. This is, right? There's no Kenyan. I give you money. Remember, we learned that's not a Kenyan. I I wasn't Moshech the wheat, then it would, for sure wouldn't be a problem, right? The whole issue is maybe this is rebeat because it's staying, right? If it, Again, if it goes into my possession, it's already mine. And then going up and down in value is irrelevant. The whole point here is that I don't acquire it actually till a year later or months later when I actually acquire it. So I'm not going there for that. If it's because of this Misha Para curse, right? That if you go back on your word, you'll be cursed. And the whole point is I have to appear face to face so that from this point on, no one can renege. What's the difference if I appear in your face or I don't appear in your face? Either which way, we made a deal. What's the difference whether we made a face to face or not? To which they're going to say, no, there is a difference. Now they're going to talk about, again, general practices. If you pay up front in the beginning of the season for grains, most likely you went to two or three people because you don't know who's going to end up with the better grains for the, for the season. It's the beginning of the season, there's nothing yet there. So basically, when I make that deal with you, the question is how serious a deal it is and can you renege? 
Well, imit fatele sam khadate. If you know that I, that you assume, you don't know, but you assume that I went to two or three buyer, uh, sellers and I gave you all money up front in the hopes to get the best grains and I'll just, you know, cancel the other deals. So you don't think I'm very serious because you think, oh, well, she put her money in a few different places. It's not clear she's really serious about this deal. And then you don't really fully commit, which means and as we have a deal, but it's a loose deal. And then there's no Misha Para. But if I mitazele, if I show up at your at your threshing floor, then samchadate, then it's obvious to you that I'm serious because I wouldn't do it, that I really need to just buy from you. Vilo, amarle. And if I didn't show up, you could sit me. I mean, oh, Irene, I done the deal because I thought that you found from somebody else better and you didn't, weren't really serious about it. Amar Ravashi, so Ravashi adds here, Hashid Amar Mishum If well, if it's all about making this deal and having face-to-face -face contact, it actually doesn't matter if I go to the threshing floor or even if I saw you in the shuk and we made a deal in the, in the marketplace, either which way, right? Then we would assume the deal is a deal. And if anyone reneges, there's a Mishapara, the curse of Mishapara is on you. You went back on your word. Amar Rav Nachman. Klala diribita. A general principle for Rebbe, now we already know this and we're going to have to ask why does Rav Nachman say this, Call agarnatra le asu. Any situation where you, what's agarnatra, that's our main thing, you get money and you get to keep the money for a while before you give me back what it is and I get more for the money, right? You give me back more, that is interest. It's forbidden, right? Even if it's not exactly interest. But I'm a Rav, right? That's our, that's our basic concept, right? That's what we said today. The benefit actually wasn't from that. It was from something else, possibly. Or okay. So now, Amaravna. So what's his point here? Well, hi, Mandi, ya zuze lakira. If I'm buying wax from you, because arba arba, and you can buy four balls of wax for a zuz. The amrale, yehivna la chamesh chamesh. And you say to me, give me the money now, and I'll give you five for a zuz. If you have the wax in hand, it's permitted. Because again, it's as if I'm buying those wax balls, even though you'll later give me other ones, that works. That's what we've talked about all the time. Right? But but if you don't have, then it's forbidden. Now the Gemara says, Pshita, we know this already. So they say, This is fascinating. So we all know from, if you have a business, the most one of the biggest challenges is always to collect, right? So basically, what if you don't have wax in hand, but people owe you wax? You're owed by other people, right? You you already bought from your suppliers and they just haven't provided it for you. Is that considered like you have wax or not? So they basically say no. I mean, you might have thought it's like you say, oh, I have it in my silo. I just can't find the key. Or I can't find my son. When my son shows up, he's got the key to there. And then it's as if I have it, I just can't give it to you, and that works. But no, we don't say that. Having to collect from someone else, right? Since you have to collect it, it's as if it's not in your property at all, because that's very unclear whether you'll actually ever get it. And therefore, that's what he's talking about. That again, you're going to get a benefit. You're going to get more, right? You're locking in, you're going to get five for the price of four, if you give me a discounted price of five, if I'm going to get five for the price of four, because I gave you the money and you're going to give it to me later, it's only going to work if you have, but not if you don't have. Because according to Rav Nachman, that's, you're taking money and I'm getting benefit from it. But I'm Rav Nachman, last thing for today. If I borrow money from you, coins, and you gave me too much, okay? You gave me extra coins. So now, Ibichdi. Okay, so now when I borrowed the money, I got extra coins. So if it's that you're getting this extra money, um, just one second, I want to check one thing. Right, so you basically you lent me money, you threw in some extra money. So is that considered like rebeat or anything? So now they say, if we just think you made a mistake, then I have to give it back to you. I'm not allowed to take more. And if not, we just think you're giving me a gift and then I can keep it as a gift. So now they want to know, what does it mean? 
let's say you gave me five shekel coins, okay? Now, when you gave me the five shekel coins, you gave me an extra one. That we can assume you just made a mistake. But if you gave me five shekel coins and mixed in there was three single shekels, that wasn't what I asked for, then we assume that it was that it was on purpose and you gave me a gift. So that's the that's how we would determine whether you gave me extra and I have to return it or whether it was a gift and then I could keep it. Because what? You wanted to hide the gift, hoping I wouldn't notice and you would just give me some extra uh, and that would work. Okay, we'll stop here for today. Let's do a very quick review. We had to understand what the case in the mission was. In the end, we said it must have been a loan. And that's why we're going to distinguish yesh or emo because if it wasn't a loan, you really don't have this distinction yesh or emo. Then we had to explain, though, it's only according to Rabbi Yoshai that there's a distinction in the loan because yesterday we saw Rabbi said that it was. Then we have Rabbi Yanai that we added here that not only the, the produce, but also the money. And then we had Rav who disagrees with him. You can't pay back money. You can't exchange value for money. And then um, we had two questions. On, we had uh, a, a the bright of Rabbi Yoshai disagreed with Rav. We had two ways of explaining it. Then we flipped the Rav, the the Rabbi Yanai Mali Hain Mali Demeim to Mali Demeim Mali Hain in a sale case. And then we said there we're going to be more lenient. You don't even need to have that explains post kimala pelo, and that's because we're going to distinguish sale and loan. And then Rabbi Rabbi Yosi gave a different reason why in post kimala pelo because you're really not gaining because if you had the money you would have just bought it somewhere else for cheaper or you know right away and the, and it would have gone up in value so you don't really gain. And then we had this other thing of Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef about the Mishapara. We got into that. And then this thing of Rabbi Nachman about getting a discounted price, which also could potentially be rebeat if the person doesn't have the item in hand. Again, it's going to be, if I get a discounted price for getting the produce later, that will be a problem according to Rabbi Nachman if you don't have it in hand, even if people owe it to you. Okay. And then we ended with this other thing about the coins, which uh, we finished up. That's it for today complicated stuff, but I hope it's slowly, the pieces are trying to fall into place. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.